All right, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, all over the world. Such a pleasure and a privilege to be on your screens today, the 2nd of May, 2020. My name is Anu Ojo, and I want to welcome you to this special program on Dr. Sunday's, Dr. Sunday at the largest platform. Well, yesterday we started the journey of a month. And this month of May, uh, we're dedicating the, the month of May actually to share life transforming testimonies uh, from different individuals. Um, we, could, we could call them mentees, we could call them disciples, we could call them followers, we could call them believers. I mean, any name we want to give to them. But the, the goal is that we want to just bring some of these people who have been impacted by the life and by the teachings and by the lessons, the principles, the values of Dr. Sunday Adilaja as we commemorate his uh, 53rd birthday. And uh, I would like to encourage everybody who is watching us right now, please do well to share this video. If you're watching us on Facebook, uh, kindly share the video on your timeline. You could invite your friends. Uh, you could suggest the video to your family members. And yeah, let's get everybody on board. And if you're watching on YouTube also, you could share this YouTube link to your friends on um, every social media platform that you belong to. Yesterday was an amazing time. We started with a testimony of uh, Mr. Hilary Ayaba. And... Um, if you missed out on it, I would like to encourage you to please go check Dr. Sunday's YouTube channel. Uh, that is Dr. Sunday Adelaja on YouTube. And you're going to see um, our conversation that we had yesterday. He shared from his life experience, his life journey before he met Dr. Sunday, uh, when he met Dr. Sunday, and then the transformation that has happened in his life, in his family, in his career, you know, amazing testimonies and today we're going to have another amazing fantastic lady with us who will be sharing our own journey uh, everybody has a different journey everybody has a different path and i think this is going to be an amazing ride for the whole month just having different personalities amazing people just coming to share with us their own journey their life transformation, and how they are not just living for themselves now, but they are living to impact their world. Today, we have someone who is going to be talking. Uh, we titled today's meeting and today's discussion, I discovered my burden for the motherless and for the homeless. But before I bring to stage our guest for today, I'd like to inform all of our viewers who are watching that uh, at the end of today's discussion, you have the opportunity to call in and to share your own testimonies. Uh, maybe you might not be, I mean, you might not be selected for the 28, 29 days or 30 days um, of this month share of people who are going to be sharing their testimonies, but you can call in actually. You can call in um, at the end of our discussion to share your own testimony. What is your own journey? and to just encourage people uh, and to get people to realize the gifts that God has given to us and to the world, the gift of Dr. Sunday Adelaja. Without further ado, it is with much uh, pleasure and with great anticipation, uh, I would like to welcome Mrs. Olajumoke Olani, who is joining us from the United Kingdom. A wonderful evening to you, Ma. Shalom. The Lord bless you. Okay. Hello, Ma. Can you can you hear me? Yeah, I can. Awesome. Shalom. The Lord bless you. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for inviting me. Awesome. Awesome. It's a pleasure. Awesome. Wow. So let's start, let's just start right in. I'm sure. Uh, there are many people who are watching and they are maybe thinking, who is this beautiful lady? <laughs> can we meet her? Can we know her? Who is, who is this lady we're seeing on our screen? So it would be, be great if you can introduce yourself to us, Ma. Right. My name is Mrs. Olajumoke Abosede Olaneyi. Um, I'm a 
61 year young lady. Whoa! <laughs> you don't mean it. I mean, no one would guess that, man. <laughs> One might, one, might, one might just put you a 30 something or a 40 something. Wow. Awesome. Glory to Almighty God awesome. for that. You look gorgeous. I'm a mother of four children, two boys, two girls. Wow. Well, and when I say girls and boy, they are men now grown. Wow. And um, yeah, I'm blessed and I'm just happy wow. to have met. Um, Dr. D DSA. Yeah. It's been a great pleasure knowing him in short period of time that I've met him. A lot has happened. Beautiful. And um, yeah, there's so much to talk about, but I mean, basically, that's just introduction for that. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you very much for that. Uh, well, today we're going to dedicate uh, this for the next one hour or, or more just to to get the opportunity to uh to meet you and to know your journey you know to know your process and to really see how you as an individual uh meeting dr sunday how that has um transformed your life what impact that his teachings and his messages or his personality maybe you maybe you've met him before maybe you've known him for some time maybe you've had interactions with him we just want to know how that has has, has affected you what 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 benefit has it brought to you how has it changed your life in any way uh so that's basically what we want to do and the goal is so that our viewers who are watching us all over the world will be able to uh maybe find some some encouragement from your testimonies you know Maybe they will be able to find some light. Maybe from your journey, uh, they would realize that, oh, this lady, she's gone through the same path that I am going through right now. And maybe I could get some tips. Maybe I could get some knowledge. Maybe I could get some wisdom from her that I can use where I am right now so that I can go through my own phase. So please, I would like to encourage you to be as free as possible. Welcome home. This is DSA family. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So this is DSA family. <laughs> yes, Ma, you're about I to say was, something. Yeah, I will start from saying that I actually, I was born into a Muslim background. Okay. Yeah, my Muslim name is Jemlat. Wow. Yeah, and um, when I met my husband, I still remain Muslim then okay and but because my husband's background and his life has been a christian okay and for the love between us it was easy for him to convert me into christianity wow and um the journey with him i started in a baptist church the the actual church is at west kilburn baptist church in uk okay i was attending that church before our wedding and everything i gave my life and um, i was baptized and everything this i'm thinking is like 38 37 years ago and going to church was new to me because it wasn't something that i practiced as a muslim i was dormant as a muslim okay. in the background i didn't practice as a muslim but i was born into a muslim, muslim family. family and all that but now becoming a christian attending the church baptist church and my children were born in baptist church we named them and everything there and this baptist church was really based with um the english back you know um background of serving yeah did I have a, that did a, have a Nigerian shenanigans? <laughs> that's it. It's a straightforward going to church and serving God. So that's where my background started as a Christian. Wow. So now, married to my husband, I got married at Yaba Baptist Church. And when my husband joined me in England, we were going to Baptist Church for some time. My children grew up there and everything. And suddenly my husband, he received a calling and he joined Pentecostal movement. 
And as a wife, I followed him and everything. And we were in church. And my husband is very honest with his calling and everything awesome. that he was doing. Awesome. So the last penny that he received for the church, he used it accordingly. Until some couple of years ago when we're now starting to plan to go back to Nigeria because I've always said to him I'd like to retire in Nigeria. I was brought to England at the age of six by my parents. Six. So I did not come to, yeah, I did not come to England, you know, out of hardship or for any reason. I my my parents brought me here. So I'm talking of fifty years ago. Wow. Over fifty years ago that I've been in England. So before all these um people coming over, hustling for this, hustling for that. So I would call myself as a proper black British. Yeah. And with that background, and I've been going home, taking my children home, and with the support of my husband, things has been going well, going home and all that, getting to know my people. And when we started to go to church in Nigeria, that's when my eyes got open to this sort of thing that's happening in the kingdom. Wow. And that kind of drew me back, and I started losing my interest as a Christian. Hmm. I no longer want to be part of Christianity again because of what I've seen and what has been happening. From my own personal experience, which I didn't even discuss with my husband or anybody, I was just praying about it because I love God and I wanted to move with God because I've been introduced to God through my husband's experience as a Christian. And and I've been enjoying Christianity until the moment I went home and I saw all sorts of things that's happening as I moved closer to churches in Nigeria. Yeah. So when I came back now, my husband was still in Nigeria. You know, he stays there and just come like twice a year or three times a year. And I'm, I go home as well and come back. The children are grown. So we have the freedom to do whatever we want to do. And we travel a lot going on holiday and things like that. So I started to pray, and that really put me off. But I did want to leave God, and I did want to stop being a Christian. Hmm. But I started, I, was, I started to get confused wow. because of the things that I've seen. So I started going online and, you know, looking at all different videos, searching and things. Then all of a sudden, um, is it this guy, what's his name, Daddy Freeze? Daddy Freeze, yeah. Yeah, the program came up. I watched his program and I saw, wow, this guy is talking in the line of what I am thinking, that hmm. what is happening in the kingdom. Hmm. So in the process of watching that, the priest, one of his programs came up and it was DSA. He was chatting with DSA and some other program of DSA came up. Yeah. So I started watching DSA. Now I dropped that, the priest. I started following DSA. DSA. And as I was following DSA, I was my eyes became more opened, and I, you know, start seeing things the way that it should be. Hmm. Some of, you know, some people were really aggressive towards him, and the way they talk, and you know, like Yoruba would say, "Olo turn your cooking, Lenny." Hmm. What, no matter what, how, oh yeah, what does that mean? Because you have to help us. Yeah, I'm going to. Yeah. When it's Olo turn your cooking, Lenny, mean if you speak the truth. You, you have, have very few followers. followers. Yeah. You have very few people that will believe in you. True. Because people don't like to hear the truth. Very true. Yeah, and for that reason, because I'm searching for the truth, mm. that now connect me with this man. So I messaged him. And so when I messaged him, in my heart of heart, I was thinking, mm, maybe this another geo in wherever it is that, you know, there's going to be so many protocols yeah. for me to be able to talk to him and whatever. Yeah. All of and my phone just rang and when i picked it he, he humbly said hello to me he introduced himself i thought no this is camp this camp <laughs> as big as this man is and what i've heard about him even my husband has had talked about him more than 10 15 years ago wow i'm thinking no this is not him calling me this is camp because because of this stage that you have to get to to get to some of the big Jews. men like him hmm. in Nigeria. I'm thinking this cannot be him calling me direct. Hmm. How come it's not his PA or secretary? 
you know, I didn't go through any protocol. There was no issue. I only messaged him and he's calling me the following day. Yeah. I, I had to ask him again, excuse me, sorry, are you really DSA? And he said, yes, it's me, ma'am. And so respectful as well. So I said, I'm sorry to ask you. The reason why I'm asking you that is because I didn't expect, you know, a prompt um, reply. Yeah. Yeah. And then the honor that you, you know, gave me, such as me too, as I am, and as big as you are, it does, it's not, this, this is not about age matter. Mm. It's about position in the kingdom. Yeah. I said, I'm really honored. Then we chatted, and that day I didn't say much to him. Then I said to him, I'm going to call him back myself. I called him and I said to him, have you got a moment? He said, no problem. I said, I need to pour my heart out to you. Wow. I said, I was born into a Muslim family. Hmm. I've grown up in a family that only my mom goes to church occasionally when she feels like. Yeah. And my parents haven't really brought me up as a solid Christian or a solid Muslim. Muslim. So it means working on relationship with God. Mm -hmm. I, said, I said, but what I have met along the way saddens me and is putting me off having to serve God. The first thing he said to me, he said, please, my sister, don't let anybody decide your work with God for you. Let that relationship be between you and your God. Don't let anything that anybody has done take you away from God. That even me, whatever you've seen in me that you believe is not of God, don't allow it to put you off. That made me to settle down. And then I explained to him how I felt about churches in England, how, you know, it's about money, raising money for the church and not, not helping the right people. people. That the Bible says, what the Bible says is not what I'm saying. Hmm. Yes, they use the Bible to preach. They use the Bible to, you know, to um, to try to encourage people to talk to people. But what the Bible says, I don't see it in the, you know, in the action of people that I've been with. Then I gave him one or two examples that I've seen. Then he just laughed and he said, "Just continue to pray. Let God inspire you and help you." Wow. And he said, "What exactly mm -hmm. are my plans?" I said, what really saddens me so much is when we give tithe, we are to pay tithe and offering. Yeah. I believe in paying it, mm -hmm. but I want it to be used for the right thing yeah. and for the right purpose. Yeah. I said, this is where I'm struggling. And this is why I've, I'm connected with you now is when I saw one of your video and that video answered some of my questions. I said, that's why I really wanted to chat with you that you know a tree cannot make a forest it's going to be very difficult for me to change the mind of millions of people that mm. they've manipulated them so far in nigeria but something has to be done and it has to start from somewhere awesome. i said people that are hungry there are so many hungry people in nigeria there are so many homeless and motherless children mm. that we churches christian are supposed to be helping and we're not helping if we have a thousand homeless people and i'm able to give two out of them accommodation that would be a success to me That's right. i said how do i go about it what do i do and homeless um home i mean motherless home how can we go about helping them a friend of mine was in nigeria i asked her to help me collect a phone number for one homeless that I want to be supporting at home. When I discussed with two or three people about this now, mm -hmm. they said to me, Ma, please don't do anything until you are, you are on ground at home. Don't send money to any homeless. Don't send any goods or any food or anything because it will not get to the children that you are meant to help. Wow. That what you're saying about what the churches are doing, individuals are also doing it. Hmm. They're up front there saying they're working in the homeless and helping the motherless and things. But what people donated out of goodness of their heart never reached the right hands. Hmm. So I said, okay. So I discussed that with um, DSA again. I said, how do we go about it? So DSA said to me, my sister, yeah, you can do it. Nothing is impossible. I have my own plan as well, but I pray that God will assist me 
to be able to pull through. Awesome. Yeah. That what I would advise you to do now is be, just continue to pray. Whenever you go home, see what you can do for these people and put in whatever that you want to do for them, be putting it aside. When you get home, even if you are only able to help just one child, that child could become something in future. That's and what you, whatever seeds you sow in the life of that child, it would now multiply to be able to help many other children. Yes. So I said, okay, thank you very much. Then I discussed about my own personal issue. He gave me some advice. Mm -hmm. I told him about my but, son. But before, but before, before you, before you get to your personal issues, I would like us to weigh in on some things you've said that are very, very important. But before then, uh, we're getting the feedback. We're getting a feedback from our studio that it's maybe we're not sure. But please kindly verify. Maybe there is a device that is on uh, at your side that is playing. Maybe I don't know if you're you're watching this Facebook live at your own end. Or please, if there's any device on from your end, maybe it's the Facebook Live that is playing or YouTube, it would be great if you can, um, can uh, do that. But before, before we, before we uh, continue our discussion, I want to speak to our viewers. Uh, you know, there's some things that Mrs. Olajumo Kez just shared that I, I think uh, <laughs> if, maybe most of us had similar experiences, right? Because I know I've heard of many people who said, I discovered Dr. Sunday online, I watched his video, and then I wrote to him, maybe it's on Facebook, or I wrote to his email, and in less than a day, in one day, in two days, he responded to me. I was not expecting it. I never thought that was possible because of the kind of person he is, the geo level. And I understand because most people are coming from that, that background, that Pentecostal charismatic, uh, you know, cycle where you, you can't talk to your, you know, to your pastors, you can't talk to your geos. But Dr. Sunday is entirely different. He is... <laughs> <laughs> it's entirely different. But there's something I really want us to talk about, um, Mrs. Olaju uh, You you grew up much not you older. You you had you had a background. Okay. C can you can you quickly adjust uh, your screen so that we don't see the ceiling, right? So that uh, good. Good. Uh, a little bit more. A little bit more. Okay. Good. All right, we're perfect now. So yeah, let's have let's have Ms. Ola Jumoke okay now. Uh, you you had your background uh, in Baptist Church before before you got into the Pentecostal the Pentecostal uh, charismatic churches youth book. So now many times Dr. Sunday comes out with a lot of teachings, right? A lot of corrections, and many Nigerians, what they say is that he's attacking the church. And many people refer to him as an antichrist, that Dr. Sunday is just out against the church. And Dr. Sunday always says this, and he tries to explain to people that when I come and I'm addressing the Nigerian church, the Nigerian church is not the whole church. So when you say I'm anti-church, no, don't, don't define church by your little reality of what you see in Nigeria. And even by your just, not even the the, the general church in question, meaning uh, the Catholic church, the Baptist, all of those, but most people are just defining church by their microcosm of just that Pentecostal charismatic churches, which actually Dr. Sunday is addressing that the Pentecostal charismatic churches, what they are doing is anti the, the doctrines of the church, you know. But you, I think you're in a better position to help highlight, you know, some of these differences. You know, coming from a Baptist church that were, that were following the, doct the right doctrines, that were doing the things in the right way, and you moving from that, that background and then experiencing the, the Pentecostal charismatic world. So you have, you've tasted both worlds. And, and I think you will be in a, in a good position to be able to draw a parallel that, okay, this was what I was seeing in the Baptist church. I saw this, number one, and I did not see it in the Pentecostal church. 
I saw this practice in, so I saw number two done in the Baptist church. I didn't see it done in the Pentecostal church. Rather, this is what I saw happening. So please help us paint, you know, a parallel picture so that our viewers can see because that's part of your testimony because many people, okay. many people. My first? Yeah. Oh, you, you, Lord. You, uh, I need to plug my phone. <laughs> okay, okay, please go ahead and plug it. Please yeah. go ahead and plug it so okay, that yeah, the battery is gone low. Okay, so that we don't we, we, we don't want to lose you at this point in time. <laughs> All right. So why I want you to why I want you to really talk about this is because uh, very few people have been able to experience both worlds. You know, yeah, me, very few people have been able to experience both worlds. But you have done that, so it would be great if you can share your own testimony and help us to see the difference uh, between both worlds? My, uh, my first answer to that would be, I'm back to Baptist Church now. <laughs> <laughs> oh. that, that rounds it up to you. I'm back to Baptist Church now. So you True. left the Pentecostal charismatic... Completely, completely, 100%. And I went round few churches locally in the area where I'm living before I decided where to stay. Wow. At the moment, my husband did challenge it. I must be honest with you. Mm. He challenged it. And I said my answer to him is that you know my background. You brought me into this. And bringing me into one thing with me is when i'm doing something i don't do it halfway i go all the way yeah. i'll do my research and i'll do what i am happy doing hmm. my aunts one of my answer to my husband when it you know challenged me was i told him that you know what when the rapture comes when time the judgment day comes i am going to answer for me not you wow you remember so the true. adam and eve's time I, Eve said to God, it was the woman, Adam said to God, sorry, it was the woman that you gave me, hmm. you know, that made me to commit sin. I said, I'm not going to give God that answer. Hmm. When God asked for my account, I'm not going to say, oh, sorry, God, I was following my husband's Beautiful. movement. Beautiful. I want to answer for me. That was what, that was my reply to my husband. I hmm. said, I want to answer for me. God is your father, so he said my, my father. Beautiful. Yeah, we're married, we're one, but when it comes to decision like this, I'm sorry, we're individual. Hmm. For me, I will not follow the Pentecostal movement as long as what I'm saying has not changed. Wow. I said, for me, now that I'm Baptist, in Baptist church, before I settled in Baptist church, I went to other Pentecostal church locally. Exactly what was happening is what was, um, you know, what chased me off is what I'm still saying. And I don't want this behavior in churches to chase me away from the kingdom and then I'll go back into the dark. Hmm. I want to remain with God, but for me to remain with God, I want to do it comfortably. I said, at the end of the day, as I'm going on, as I'm going along with my Christianity life, I'm praying. If I've done anything wrong along the way, I'm praying that God himself should give me the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding yeah. to know to do the right thing. Hmm. But I'm not going to do anything in line with anybody's decision or anybody's. No one is going to push me Beautiful. to do what they believe. Beautiful. I, I became a Christian because I wanted to. Hmm. So I am not going to base my Christianity on anybody's belief or what anybody says to me. Beautiful. I said, yeah, what I believe from the word of God, yes. You see, I've seen many people attack DSA about tithe and offering, and that's where I had an issue. Hmm. I'm not saying tithe and offering should not be taken to church. But what did God say we should do with it? Yeah. That's where the homeless and motherless came in for me. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Because when you are collecting something on behalf of me in my name, and now I'll just give a simple example. Now you collected a thousand pounds from, from me in my name, Olaji Moke Olani. That's right. But now that when you now spend that money, 
there was no connection with me anymore. Nothing to do with me anymore. We are collecting this money in church on behalf of the voiceless people, hmm. widows, hmm. homeless, people that are suffering. Why did Jesus say in the Bible that when I was naked, you clothed me? Yeah. This is where tithe and offering comes in. Hmm. What we are supposed to do with that money. Wow. Wow. So this is where I was struggling. That's where my challenge was. That's what led me to Daddy Freeze on the Facebook yeah. and led me to DSA. Because I was searching to, for people. If I was able to reach all that other geo before DSA, DSA, maybe I would have. But it was easy for me to tap into GSA because I was really looking for an answer. And mm -hmm. my testimony today is that I thank God for the life of DSA because he, he through his boldness, I tapped out of his boldness and that made me to remain in the kingdom as a Christian. Wow. Because wow. I was about to give up. I stopped going to church. Wow. Until I spoke to DSA. Wow. And I spoke, I told my husband, this is not about Mr. and Mrs. issue. This is about mm. my heaven. Yes, yes. This is about when I depart from this world. When I wasn't a Christian and I wasn't mm. serving God, mm. I was ignorant. Yeah. That I can sit down with God and say, I didn't know anything. Mm. But now that I know and then continue to follow the wrong doctrine, mm. what am I going to say to God? I said, I want to do what I feel I need to do. That's when the homeless and um, thing came in. But my biggest testimony to DSA today is that mm. I thank God for his boldness. I know people will continue to harass him. And what I really, really like in him, because I'm that kind of person, yeah. he's, very, he's a principled person. He doesn't just do whatever. People, no matter what people say is about him, mm -hmm. he still do what he believes is right. Yeah. At the end of the day, he might not be hundred percent right. Yeah. But he believes in himself and he carries on what he believes in, and that is the kind of person I am. That's why it's easy for me to connect with him. Awesome. What he has done for me thus far, he has tied me down in Christendom. Wow. Because what you're saying, Ma, you know, what you're saying is actually very powerful because, you know, uh, many, many, many of these pastors and Jews, they don't know, they don't have any idea how their departure from the truth of the gospel and from the doctrinal uh, tenets that Jesus laid and the apostles laid, their departure from it has led many people away from the truth and has led many people away from God. They don't know because that's exactly what you're saying. They don't know. Maybe they do know, but what you're saying right now is bringing to light that many of these wrong doctrines, many of the illusions that these pastors are selling to people, many of their, of their fake prophecies, their fake truths, their non-truths, has led thousands and maybe even millions of people away from Christ. Because that would have been you too. Yeah. You, that would have been you too. You would have left, I mean, you would have left the faith because, you know, and, and it's understandable because, you know, this is meant to be a community of faith where you're coming as as a believer, you're coming to gather, right, with other believers, trying to, I mean, encourage yourself. And you are coming to the church, and what you're seeing doesn't look like Christ. And you're like, but these people are, I, mean, they, I thought I'm meant to come to a place where there is love, but there is no love. I'm meant to come to a place where there is meant to be encouragement, but, encouragement, but what I'm just getting is people beating me down. And there are many people who were once Muslims who converted to Christians, and they're going back to the Islamic religion. Why? Because this... What they've seen. Yeah, what they've seen in the churches doesn't align with the truth. You know, mm -hmm. many people might say, oh, why? Why, to, why? why did they go back? It's because they never knew God. Because they never... But, you know... That's, you know, I want that's to, not the answer. That's not the answer. Please, maybe you can also bring some light in that area. Because, you know, remember I asked you the question that because you 
have tasted what it means to be in a true church, in a Baptist church, and you've also tasted the Pentecostal church, you have a testimony in that, and your testimony can bring life to people so that they can see from you, from your testimony, that some of the things that Dr. Sunday is hammering on, on the, in the Pentecostal charismatic church is not a personal vendetta. You know, you can see it. You have tasted it. You know exactly what should be done because you have seen true doctrine practiced in the Baptist church. So I'll be so interested for you to even share more light in some of the things that you saw done right in the, in the Baptist church. You know, and what you didn't see happen or the wrong thing that you are seeing that you saw personally um, happen in the Pentecostal church that would have led to you losing your faith in Christ. Amen. Thank you. Um, what I, what, okay, let me start from the bit that you said people have left the, faith, um, the yeah. church. Yes. I left the church. Hmm. I did leave the church. I came back after speaking to Pastor Sunday. The advice he gave me then is that, I'm not going to tell you to go to a particular church, yeah. but don't give up on God because of your salvation. Don't give up on God. God, because mm. of your salvation. Mm. Don't let anybody push you to lose your salvation. Wow. That was his advice to me. Your personal said, relationship sister, with God. Mm. Yeah. He said, my sister, carry on praying, continue to build your relationship with God. Beautiful. And look around, go to different churches and see what they're doing hmm. and see what is happening. If you find one that are doing what you believe should be done oh, in the kingdom, beautiful. then remain so that you can continue to grow. Wow. I'm not going to tell you to go back to Pentecostal. I'm not going to tell you to go to non-Pentecostal. Hmm. I want it to be a personal decision of your own. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. So I now, that's why I went back to back, um, many church. And when I went back to many churches, watching, sitting down, watching, when they, when I get there, you know, they'll give you a little, a little um, hand, little whatever to give your detail. And I'll say to them, not to worry, I'll give it to you when I'm ready. Because I don't want anyone to start chasing me. I was doing a win, I was window shopping. When you say window shopping, I was looking for a church to belong to. Mm. So what stop, What made me to stop at Baptist Church is what I saw there. Okay. It's along the line of what I'm looking for, what the Bible says we should do. This church is all, I'm the only black person in that church. The only black person? I'm the only black person in that church. But where am I going there? Why did I say this? They're raising fund and money collected every Sunday, divided into many things to do within the community, what they're going to do in Africa, what they're going to do for homeless in the community, what they're going to do for motherless in the community. Wow. So that, you see now, when I said I was window shopping, they wow. didn't see my heart. They didn't know what I was looking for. Hmm. They were doing what I was looking for and what the Bible says we should do. To show love. So, yeah. So that, that is a great testimony for Pastor Sunday. Pastor Sunday actually evangelized to me to remain in the kingdom. Hmm. And he advised me on what to do. And following his advice, I'm able to go back, you know, belong to, you know, the body of Christ hmm. again. Wow. Wow. I would have given up completely. And nobody can, I'm a, I mean, I would, describe, I would describe myself as a very principled and very stubborn individual. Wow. When I decide to do something, you go it would take it. God for anyone to change me. Wow. So it was, yeah, it was easy for him to say to me, he didn't push me, he gave me the option, mm -hmm. and I followed his advice, and the advice has become a testimony today for me, because that made me to remain in the body of Christ. I would have I wasn't planning on going back to be a Muslim because I was never practicing, mm. you know, as a Muslim. Mm. The first um, religion that I've ever followed is Christianity because my dad did not bring me up in any way. Wow. My father was, he believed in his, um, he knows that he was from a Muslim background. His mm. name is Mustafa. That's okay. his 
Muslim's name. Muslim name. Mm -hmm. You understand? Yes. Yeah, Mustafa. So you know that I'm a, from a proper Muslim, Muslim. background. Yeah. So top it all, Elijah in the barista, you know he's a conch Christian. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry, conch Muslim. Muslim. Sorry about was, that. But yeah, he's but, my uncle. Yeah. No, yeah. no, that's just to make it clearer to you that I am from, he's my uncle. Wow. Yeah, that's it. That's to let you know that I am, a, I was born into a Muslim Bad home. Man. Wow. Yes, but I never practiced any religion until I met my husband. Wow. Wow. So at the end of the day, my testimony today, I thank God for being able to connect with um, DSA hmm. because if I had not connected with them, I wouldn't have gone back to church. Hmm. I was searching for the truth. Wow. And he led me to the truth. Wow. He didn't force me. He didn't tell me what to do or what not to do. He only advised me. Hmm. And I listened to his advice. And now I am a full member in Baptist Church. And I love what we're doing there. Wow. It's a shame I didn't know in advance I would have shown you what some of the things that we do. Some of the things that we send to Africa. That's why I said I'm the only black there. And they've been doing this thing before I joined and them. And these were white people. They are is community. The complete white. The, I'm the only black person in the church right now. Who are, and they <laughs> are looking after my people in Africa. They're looking after your people. <laughs> Pardon? They're looking after our people. Yes, they are sending tools to Africa. Sewing machine, um, tools for carpentry, tools for any kind of material that. You know, it's no longer in use here, or maybe because of technology, but they know it's useful for Africa, they'll collect it. The money that we now put in the offering in church will do the shipment to go home. This is Christianity. That's it. That's why I'm, this is what I'm looking for. This is why I thought that wrong things are being done. In, if every church in Nigeria are doing what we should be doing. Exactly. There will be no problem. There will People be no homeless be person on the streets, man. No. There will no. be no motherless person who is trying to um, go to school. And that's exactly what you're saying, man. And that's what that's what I'm trying to. Only if only our our people can hear can hear you. Even if they can hear you and can can see exactly that you from within you you are searching for truth. You are searching for love. Because that's what the kingdom of God is. The kingdom of God is the kingdom of love. Where in the Bible, you, you, you said it earlier, Jesus rightly said, he said, see, I was the one who was naked and you, you, clothed, you put clothes on me. I was the one who was hungry and you gave, and you me, fed me. You gave me food to so you fed me. I was the one who was thirsty. You gave me water to drink. That is me. And when you do this to the very little of of man, you're doing it to me. But you got into the Pentecostal church and you were not seeing that. No. And they would, and, and when DSA says that there is no love, they, DSA comes out and he says, there is no love in the Nigerian church. And people don't understand, but you can see it. Your testimony today is telling us every Nigerian Christian who cares to listen, and you are just echoing what the person has been saying that. This is not just because the person is stalking, but you have seen it yourself that there is I, no love in the Nigerian church. And you know what I'm saying is just one percent of what is going wrong. There are so many other things, but this particular one is because that's my area. Your body. Yeah, that's my burden. That's my burden. That's my area. There, there will be some other testimony and some other thing that other people can say. Yeah. But I'm not saying this to destroy anyone, and I'm not saying this to elevate anyone or to bring somebody down. Of course. If we can change, this, the time is still there. The time is still there to do the right thing. I know a lot of people, I've watched some of the video, they abuse DSA, oh, why can't you call these people? And I, when I first spoke to DSA and some of the video that I saw, I asked him the same question. Mm. I said, why didn't you call these people have a meeting privately with you know with so 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 and then let them see where you're coming from and he told me he tried to you see you can only take a, a, a horse to the river you can't force, you can it, force to it you can force it yeah you can't that's force right it to drink. Yeah. like i'm talking now my own personal opinion 
nobody, I can't say everybody else is going to follow what I'm saying or mm. everybody's going to see what I'm saying, but it's left to me to be bold, speak out what I feel in mm. my heart. If anybody get up tomorrow and kill me, I will still die. But I want to die with the truth. Oh, God. I want, I want to, to die, die with, the truth. with the truth. Yeah. Yes. I want to, because nobody's going to live on this earth forever. Hmm. So if anybody challenge me or say anything, I'm saying what I'm saying because of how I feel. It's hmm. not that DSA has bought me hmm. or has paid me to say whatever or, you know, that, oh, I'm following him for a particular reason or whatever. No, I'm following him because he has helped me back in the kingdom and he's speaking the truth and the truth has to be said it's difficult but people that speak the truth they never ever have majority mm. it's always minority but it's better to have like i always say to my husband it's better you take 10 people to heaven than taking a million to hell that's right that's right that's right that's right yeah it's better you speak the truth mm. the truth word of god take 10 to mm. heaven wow. than looking to be big on earth here mm. and then when it's time a million will follow you to hell mm. that's not god's word that's so right. at the end of the day i i i mean i just i mean when i spoke to when i spoke to dsc about my son all right and the issue that he was going through he he ministered to me and he said he's willing to talk to him but he said he needs to read some books and one of the books that he read was, Who Am I? Who am I? Why am I here? We are going, to try, we are going to try to show the book. We'll try to show it. Yeah, both of it. My, my son read it and my son credited the book seriously. So that's another testimony for me. Hmm. Because when I gave my, when I spoke to DSA regarding this issue about my family personal thing that was you know my son was going through and you know his uh, business and things like that when he now we talk about the book and the book got to my son and he read it my son said mom the book is fantastic and it's really helping me wow. it's changing wow. a lot of the way that i think so you see i'm not saying and uh, dsa is 100 percent mm. he must have a fault of as course, human being as a human. one way or the other yes 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 but do, I don't focus on people's negative. Mm. I focus on the positive because I want to learn. Beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah, I want to learn. Mm. And this is the problem that we have in Africa. They take both negative and positive and run with it. No. If there's anything that I see wrong, I will mention it mm. and then I'll finish it there. But I want to focus on the positive. If you've done something good in life, right yes. i'm gonna tap into that because i myself i want to do better than what you've done that's right and that is one of the area where i'm connected with pastor sunday and sunday i like i'm not gonna let him go i've told him i said if you run from me i'll run after you <laughs> <laughs> i said Fantastic. see yourself as an orange back man now i'm the orange on your back <gasps> are you not orange back can never leave home without their back. Yeah, Everywhere right. hunchback goes, they carry it. it. goes along. So I said to him, he was laughing. I said, I'm your hunchback now. <laughs> so if you try to run from me, you're joking. You are going nowhere. <laughs> Fantastic. Because, yeah, because he has he has impacted my life wow. in many ways. Wow, wow. In the, in the short period of time that I've met him, he has impacted my life. How, how in long? Many ways. How long was it? How short is that? Um, up to date now, let me say, maybe we're rolling into the second year now. Okay, okay, okay. And imagine, 61-year-old woman, imagine what I've gone through. And for me now to see the light in a couple of years is fantastic. Wow, 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 wow. It's fantastic. Wow, wow, amazing. You know, I, let me just, let me, let me share some words with our viewers who are watching, you know. Uh, there's something really fascinating about what, what you've been sharing with us because, you know, many people uh, would speak to pastors and they would expect, you know, the pastors would expect to say, okay, I'm God or they, they may not say I'm God, but just try to just pose like they are, you know, assistant God. 
And then they say, okay, just, I mean, just um, let me just get the phone and speak to your son. Uh, then I'll just release some two, just maybe one prophetic word. And then the prophetic word will just solve your issues. And then maybe um, you can just sow, sow some prophetic seeds that will just seal, <laughs> you know, that will seal your son's uh, question. Everything will be solved. But what you said was, when you shared the story of your son with Dr. Sunday, what he said was, I'm not in a, I'm not in a rush. I'm not in a hurry to, to give him a call. Let him go seek, seek and search for the truth himself. Let him go discover it. It's not me. It's not about me. And that's one thing also that makes the Pentecostal charismatic churches miss it. They are gospel, and the gospel in that place is centered on man, on the big man, on the main man. I'm the, I'm the man. I'm the man of the church. This is our man of God. This is the person, this is our apostle of today. This is our, you know, it is all centered on one man. It's not about truth. So it is the person who is the man of the day. He's the one who will tell you, what needs to be done is one that will direct you, tell you this, you must do this. But you said you spoke to Dr. Sunday, and he just said, no, let your son go get that book. It's a book. It's not me. Let him just go. Let him go get the book, seek for the knowledge himself. And he did that, and you said that your son came and is like, oh, maybe, maybe it would be good if you can share some more things that you got from your son. Because I think, yet much now, shouldn't it? So I think it would be great if you can, you can share some, some more, some more uh, details that you got or some more testimonies that you got from your son. Because your son read the book, Who Am I? Uh, let's have the book, Who Am I? Can you share some, some more light with the experience of your son reading this book? The first thing he said to me is, Mom, have you read the book? I said, no. You know I don't like reading. He said, Mom, you need to read it. <laughs> So he referred the book directly to you. <laughs> he said, Mom, you need to read it. Wow. He said, I'm going to read it again. And he said, I won't give you mine because I've really written a lot of things in it. I've, um, you know, like highlights quite a lot of things. This book now is personal to me. I can't give you this. Wow. You've got to get your own. Wow. And he said the book has really, you know, enlighten him in so many ways that many of the things that he was not getting an answer to the book spoke to him. Mm. He said, even if I don't speak to DSA, the book has told me a lot. Even if I don't get to speak to DSA, yeah. the book has given me everything that I a need. A lot. Wow. And one thing I like about DSA is that he didn't just talk about his own book alone. He said to me, look for other relating book to it. Yeah. He said that? Yeah. All that book that relate to that issue. You are, he said to me, you are a mother. Search and see what is good for your son, what is going to help him. Wow. So it's not about just because it is my book. No. I'm the author. Read only my own no. book. No. Wow. No. And that really made me to respect him a lot more. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And the book has really helped my son a lot. It's really, he's doing well. You know, it's, um, the book has done what I would do in a couple of years within a month. <laughs> because as a mother, you know, the kind of um, um, conversation between me and him, or oh, do this, do that, whatever. He got all the answer that he, want, he was looking for in the book. So really, that book did a lot of work as a mother on my behalf. Wow. You know, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm smiling right now. And people don't know why I'm smiling. But it is because I know something that most people don't know. <laughs> and I feel okay. like what you're saying wants me to just let the, the, uh, the cards out of the bag, you know. Because uh, maybe I'll just give a, a hint. Dr. Sunday, next week, will be releasing a book that, you, that a chapter of that book is exactly what you just said, that a book will give to you in one day what you've not gotten in decades. 
Mm. And that is a book. I believe that. That is a book that will be that will be that will, that will be coming out next week. Next week, most likely Friday. So I, you know what yeah. I need to advise you guys to do now because of um, lazy people like me. Don't just do book. Do we do? Um, you know they have some books that you can listen to. Oh yeah. The same thing that's in the book is in the works. We are working on that. Yeah, we've had please, we've please, had many because requests. Because I want to read all his book from A to Z, but I'm lazy when it comes to reading, and I would love to. I will buy every single one of them. I've gone through a lot of his book on Amazon because of what my mm -hmm. son's testimony, mm -hmm. and out of laziness, I've not touched, you know, to buy them. Wow. Because I know I'm just going to buy it and it will be sitting there. I won't read it. I'm terrible when it comes to reading. Yeah. Yes, ma, we're listening. We're listening, ma. Yeah, so... Um, wow. What we do to my son? I basically, he has done... They are saying, you know, knowing him in a couple of years, he has done a lot of things for me and I just thank God for his, for his life. life. I, thank, I thank God for him assisting me out of um, my thought of leaving the Princeton, wow. Princeton dump. Beautiful. Many may not believe what I'm saying, but I know what I'm saying because it's my personal issue. Hmm. It's not about anybody, it's about me. You. And it's about the decision that I made and what turned around that decision wow. as well. Beautiful. You know? Beautiful. So it, it, it's, um, it's great that, that he, he was able hmm. to, 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 to assist me to get back on Together. ground. And I like what he told me about my plan for home as well. He told, he told me not to rush things. Okay, wait. Before, before you get into your plan, because you you're about to talk about your plan for your homeless and motherless, right? Yeah. Okay, before we, before we get to your plan, I want to say, I want to just give a, a very important announcement right now. Uh, just uh, from some of the things you mentioned, what, there's going to be a banner right now that will be shown on the, on, our, on the screen. And that is because, okay, let, let me just get the whole world ready about this. Because very soon, very soon in less than a month, there's going to be what we call the DSA app. Can, okay. we see, can we see the banner, please? Yeah, so there's going to be the DSA app. See, this is, that is it's right there. Most of you can see it on the screen. Bold. We want to make it so bold. So, D, v, so the name of the app is going to be Vintage DSA app. So this yeah. app is coming soon. And this app is going to have all, it's going to be like a one-stop. Most of the say yes. It's going to be a one stop to all of Dr. Sunday's materials. Either it is audios, his videos, his books, his articles, everything is going. <laughs> the world has not seen anything like that. You know, right now, people are going to Facebook, YouTube, going to um, blog. But this app that is coming very soon, it is, so you, all you need to do is just go download the app for free and everything is there <laughs> so i'm gonna be the first one to download it <laughs> it's good i will be the first, be the one first. To i'm, I'm it sure there are, many, there are going to be many people who are going to compete with you to be the first <laughs> <laughs> so i just want everybody who is watching to be on the watch out as a matter of fact we have some of our social media platforms right now maybe some of you don't know but if you go to facebook search for vintage dsa there's a, there's a vintage DSA, uh, I think it's a page right now, where we are just putting out, you know, a lot of content just to, for people to get ready for this app because it's coming. It is coming, world. <laughs> it is coming. So, Praise God. <laughs> it Hallelujah. is coming. So I would like to encourage everybody who is watching right now, please go to search for vintage DSA on Facebook. I would like us to have the banner again on Facebook. We ha the, there's a page also on Instagram. There's a page on LinkedIn. There's a page on Twitter. I've seen it, and I was wondering, what is this? Okay, you've been wondering, what is it? Well, yeah. I mean, it's just, <laughs> that is it. So it is good that you mentioned it, because on that DSA app, there's also going to be this uh, audio version of his books. So there's going to be the audio version of his books. 
So, I that's, mean, I, that's an answer to my prayer. That, I, I, I'm <laughs> telling you, to maybe thousands of prayers, your prayer, many people have been praying. So, please go now, go search for Facebook, maybe not now, maybe after the program, go to the Facebook uh, group, like the page, go to the, to the Instagram, everywhere, because when we're going to release the app, it is going to be all out there. So you can easily just go there, download it. And there are many more things in store. But I'll just Amen. Keep, <laughs> I'll just keep it now. Just let's let's just let's just keep it keep now. It in the cooler. Keep uh, it let's in keep the cooler. it cool. <laughs> let's keep it cool. Let's come back to let our discussion chill. of let today. <laughs> but I just decided to say that because of some of the things that you said. Because many people uh, they've been trying to just okay. Uh, how do I get? How do I get the Dr. Sunday's materials? Is he on YouTube? Is he on SoundCloud? Is he on? Bo? Yeah, yeah. It's coming under one umbrella. Now, just, so one umbrella. just one umbrella. Just one umbrella. Just vintage DSA app. That's it. Hallelujah. <laughs> That's Hallelujah. it. Oh, amazing. So, Ma, let's come back to your testimony right now about mm. your plan for the homeless and the motherless and your discussion with DSA as regards that. I said to him, going back to Nigeria at this age, I'm not gonna work for nobody or whatever, it will be like leisure time. But the time that I have, like 24 hours in a day, I'm willing to spend some of it to help the homeless wow. and the motherless. Mm. And my plan, maybe to connect with some that's already existing, yes, yeah. or I start my Yours. own. Beautiful, beautiful. And the answer the essay gave me, then he didn't put me off. He said, pray about it. Bring God into it. You are doing it for God, not about you. You're not doing it for um, publicity, fame, or anything. Pray about it. Let God lead you. Whatever God says, and I'll be praying along with you. Awesome. And I will also follow it up with you. Whatever wisdom, encouragement that you need, that I can input, we will say. Isn't that amazing? It is. That's, you see, you see what, what happened is that most of these people that criticize this man, if they can have the opportunity to really dig down and talk to him mm. and find out mm. why most of the statement is making they will be able to understand mm. but many of them are judging him from afar uh, i could have done the same thing uh, I, you know from what i'm hearing from one or two people that i know that are against him i've been talking to one person now that person is starting to see the light hmm. and um i said you know this man is human being nobody wants to do anything that's going to destroy him or destroy his name yeah. what you guys are saying is not what it's saying or his plan hmm. he is not out there to destroy anybody hmm. he's not out there to bring anyone down wow. all he's trying to do is for us to unite as body of christ and do the right thing beautiful well said well said you see, united hmm. we stand, divided we fall. fall. That's right. It's not, you know, these people that he's talking about, they have great, they have great ideas as well. If they can bring that idea to the table with the essay hmm. and they join it together, things will happen. That's right. That's right. But because their plan is different to his plan, hmm. so it can't work. Yeah, that's so true. It's difficult for many of them to change from what they've done up to date. Hmm. Hmm. It's very, very difficult for many of them to change. change. That's why it's difficult for many to believe the truth. Hmm. And I'm sure in the heart of many of our people, they know that what he's saying is right. Wow. But because it's hard for them to, you know, to, 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 <laughs> to give up sin, you know, when you've been sinning for so long. Yes, yes. It'll be very, very difficult. It's not easy. Hmm, true, true. It's not. True. It's not easy because it's something that you're so used to. It's what brings food to the table for you. What, but one thing we don't know is that we're doing everything. The Bible says it's not by might, it's not by power, oh, it's by the spirit of the living right, God. That's right. If those so-called people really believe in the living God, 
that he can provide my need according to his riches. That would happen, but you see, the, the, people, the, the, the worries is still there that, oh, if I stop doing what I've been doing, I'm going to become penniless. Hmm. Or this is going to happen to me, that's going to happen to me. Yeah. This is one of the reasons, you know, this issue is still happening and it's still going on. Hmm. If we can base our belief and our thinking on the word of God yeah. and believe that he can do all things hmm. through his son that give us the strength. That's right. If we can believe that I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me, hmm. then things will change. Beautiful. But because everything is being done by the power of human beings, but the Bible says it's not by, it's not by might, it's not by, by power. power. That's right. By the spirit of the living God, if we can leave it to God, it will happen. It's, I'm, I just want to give an example. If I've worked yes. so hard, let's say I've been stealing from you now, right? Yes, ma. To survive. And you didn't know I'm stealing from you. And I've been living comfortably by stealing from you, taking from you, but you don't know. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And somebody see what I'm doing and say, oh, Jumi, stop that. It's not right. I'll be scared because I've been living so comfortably by stealing from you. Yes, yes. Do you get me? Yes, I do. Yeah, because I've been so comfortable stealing from you, eating out of your pocket. Yeah. So at the end of the day, I will find I will find it hard to do the right thing to stop stealing from you. Yeah. I will find it really hard. hard yeah. Because I'll think that oh, if I stop taking what I've been taking from this man now, where am I going to get it from? Not knowing that. That thing that I'm taking from you is not even yours in the first place. It belongs to God. Yeah. The same God that provided for you can provide even better for me if true. I do the right thing. True, true. Very so true. This is where we're wrong. This is why we are so ignorant to the truth because we are so locked into the old way of thinking that, no, I can't stop this. If I stop, that's the end of me. Wow, wow, wow. So people will say, oh, why can't she say that she's in UK, she's comfortable, blah, blah, blah. You know, they're both abroad, DSA is abroad, she, she's abroad, she, you know, they're both there. They, you know, even if even if they don't work, the government will feed them. But we in Africa, you know, we in Africa, who is, we can't, that is, that is the mentality. Yes. Me being here is not by choice. Like I said, my parents brought me here very young, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Many people are in England for many reasons, but it's not because they know the right thing to do. It's because God wants them there. Yeah, true. Very right. Very true. You understand? Very right. So yes. we need to do, we need to do everything to please God. That is it. Hmm. Yeah, even if it's not everything, as far as you can, mm -hmm. as much as you can, yeah. to please God. Hmm. And this is what I'm striving for. I don't want anybody to see me that I'm against anybody, uh, any pastors or anybody in Nigeria. No, I'm not against anybody. Hmm. I'm just against not doing the right thing. Beautiful, beautiful. Well said, well said, well put. Because, you know, the, the Bible says it very clearly that there is nothing that we can do against the truth. But... For the truth and anyone who is dedicated anyone who is you know sold out to the truth that is all you're going to be championing for that's all you're going to be seeking after that's all you're going to be telling people about it's about truth it's not about personalities and that's what you're trying to say it's not about personalities it's not about individual lives it's not about what somebody's doing it's just hey it's truth and you know the has a has a book you know the the supremacy of truth, you know, and that book, Dr. Nandi was trying to make people realize that, you know, truth is supreme. Truth is, that is, that, that's, there's no, there is no expediency, there is no circumstance, and there is no, okay, uh, because I'm in Nigeria, then I have to subside the truth, you know, I have to put the truth under so that uh, my, my need for survival, you know, I need to survive. So let's just put the truth aside for now. Let me survive. And when I survive, then I can know. Truth has to be supreme. Truth has to be number one. Well, the, Bible, the Bible rightly says, know the truth and the truth will set you free. That is very true. And that's where freedom is, been, is lost in Africa. 
and in Nigeria especially. Can you talk about that? What do you, what do you mean by freedom is lost in, in Africa, in Nigeria, in church? Um, freedom is lost because me, um, I know I've spoken to a few people and they do agree with what I'm saying. Hmm. But they can't say it because um, they feel they're fearful. They're fearful. Yeah. They're fearful. And that's not freedom. Um, when you're fearful, you they haven't got freedom of speech. There's no freedom of speech. And hmm. I believe they should allow individuals to express their mind and their heart. Wow. And these are, are these are Christians, right? They can't speak about... When you say they are... They, is it, are you referring to like people in the church who cannot speak about what is going on in the church or you're just speaking generally? In, in the church, in the and, church generally. and generally. In the hmm. church and generally. Hmm. People are scared. They know the truth. And they know that the truth needs to be said, but they're scared to say it. Wow. You see, like, what I'm doing now, this interview, many wouldn't... Many they would wouldn't dare. <laughs> they wouldn't dare. And many is going to go against it. I'm going to receive calls and things when they say it. But you know what? Like I said, I, I, when I find something is right and is the truth, I run with you it. go for it. Hmm. I run with it. I don't. Nobody's gonna decide the way I should live my life because the day I was born, the only witness person that was there when I was coming into this world was my mother yeah. and God Almighty. Hmm. Right? Yes. Nobody decided how the birth was given to me. Hmm. God planted me in that great woman's womb and carried me for nine months hmm. only god knew he knew me even before i was planted That's there right. hmm. so nobody on earth has hmm. the right to say this is what i should do or this is what i should say wow yeah i want to do things that i believe in my heart is hmm. right maybe later on as i'm moving along with my life i may realize that oh okay i missed it a little bit yeah. there but what I believe at that moment is what I am going to do hmm. because my life belongs to me. If I die tomorrow, no one's going to die with me. That's right. That's when right. the judgment day comes, nobody's going to answer my behalf. That's right. That's right. So if I'm wrong, let it be between me and my right. God. Hmm. This relationship about Christianity is not about any pastor. It's not about DSA. It's not about GO. It's not about anybody. It's it's about my relationship with God. Mm. And if I find anybody who's going to help me to do the right thing, I will do it. I will follow that individual Beautiful. until I find out myself. There's nothing you can say to me that, mm. you know, about anyone that I believe in that would change my mind. If you, if you, let's say I meet you now and then you start talking to me about somebody and you say, oh, that person is a thief. I'm not going to go by your word. I'm going to watch that person. Until I catch them stealing. Because you're looking for the then, truth. I'll, that's it. I'll search for the truth. If that, if I find a person steal or stole from me or catch the person stealing, then I will stand on what I have seen. Same. I'm not going to go by your words. So what I'm doing with DSA now is not about anybody. It's about me searching for the truth. Beautiful. And because he has helped me and he has helped my family hmm. in certain ways, Wow. I'm sorry. Like I said, I'm his hunchback right now. <laughs> You're hunched to the truth. <laughs> That's it. And they're going to have to operate him to get rid of the hunchback. <laughs> so, and that operation is not a simple one. It's going to be very, very... It will take God to do that operation. It will operation. take God to be, the, to be the surgeon. So, remove the hunchback. Wow. Wow. Awesome. You know... Uh, Mrs. Olajim, okay, I know your, your, your testimony today is so strong and so powerful. And uh, I'm sure so we have some of our viewers who are watching who might be able to relate with some of the things you've said. And I want to just our viewers to know that they can actually call in. Uh, if you're watching us right now and you would like to share your thoughts, you would like to share, you, maybe you want to contribute or you want to ask questions or you just want to join the, the conversation, uh, you sure can do that, actually. Uh, if you're watching on Facebook or on YouTube, this is what you need to do. Just go to your Facebook Messenger and search for Olena. So the spelling of Olena is O-L-E-N-A. So Olena 
S dot. Uh, that would lead you to the messenger that you can write to. Just write to us at Olena S dot. Uh, this is how you know that it is the right one. It has the profile picture of um, like a mask there and then movement against deception in the church. Uh, so that's movement against deception in the church. So you see the profile picture there. Just write to us. Don't call us yet. We're going to, uh, we're going to have the time to receive calls after uh, the, the interview. But just write to us that you're interested in, in uh, calling, in contributing, and we'll be very happy to hear you, share your thoughts, share your contribution, and to join in today's, in today's conversation. You know, uh, Mrs. Mrs. Jumoke, one thing that you said, um, uh, so one thing you said that I want to just bring back, when you asked Dr. Sunday about your motherless, the, your plans for the motherless and the homeless people, you said, Dr. Sunday said, he directed you to God, and he said, go and meet God. You know, that's something that we don't see a lot. In, in the body of Christ, especially in the Pentecostal and charismatic churches. People are not, people are not directed to God. People are, people are rather directed to man or to stuff. Maybe they tell you, okay, go and get a, an handkerchief or go and get an anointing oil or go and get, you know, just mediums. And that's why the Kosondi always talk, talks about paganism and syncretism in the African church that you know, they, they attach people's faith to man or to mediums. But what the person told you and the, you are saying to us today was that when you asked him those questions, he said, no. Just like what Jesus was telling his, his disciples when they asked him, can you teach us how to pray? And he told his disciples, when you want to pray, say, our father. Don't say, my, don't say Jesus is father. <laughs> no. Don't, and, and also we have in the church now, they're saying God of those bishops, God, God of God, God all over them. No, it's, it's not, don't say, don't, Jesus, imagine, that's Jesus. Jesus is not going to tell his disciples to say, when you are praying, say, oh, uh, God of Jesus. No, say our, you know, our father. He's, he is my father. He is your father. Your father as well. And so when you want to pray, say our, he is Simply, our. that's what, simply, that's what, um, and Jesse is saying that, okay, as an elderly sister to me, you are asking me for advice, but we have a father who gave birth to both of us. Go and talk to him. Wow. Yeah, go and talk to him. And whatever he says, bring it back to the table that me and you can discuss. That's where I look at it. Ooh, That's where I look at it. That says, sounds amazing. Yeah. It's, you know, it's like, oh, okay, sister, you told me your issue. Even though he may have an answer then and on his own opinion, he didn't, he didn't you know, bring it straight to me. Hmm. He said, go and speak to God about it. Pray to God about it. And whatever God put in your heart, you're not going home yet. It could be this year. It could be next year. It could be whenever. Hmm. Whatever God put in your heart and whatever God says to you, bring it back. Because you are not doing this thing for yourself or me. You are doing it on behalf of God. So let hmm. God be the one to lead you. And if he leads you, you will not go wrong. Wow. And I'm holding on to that advice. Wow. wow. See, this is what I'm saying. Many people hmm. are getting it wrong. They don't really know this man. Hmm. They don't know him. Hmm. And they need, you need to build relationship with somebody. You need to know them before you can start, you know, talking about them and judging them. Yes, maybe he's done one or two things wrong. It's not perfect. Yeah. DSA is not perfect. I'm not yeah. saying it's perfect. Who? The only perfect Who? person that's ever walked on this earth is Jesus. <laughs> Case closed. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> so at the end of the day, don't use what he has done wrong to keep judging it. Hmm. If you have the opportunity to speak to him as, you know, as somebody you love, tell him. And one thing I like about him, he's so humble, he won't tell you that, who are you to tell me what you're no, telling me? No. He will tell, yeah, he will listen to you. Yeah. And the next time you speak to him, you say, you know what, my sister, sometimes I've discussed some things with him. So when next we talk, you say, uh, Sister Jumi, you know you said something, so, so, so. I said, what did I, when did I say, what did I say? He said, well, you know, I thought about it. Wow. For him to reflect on my statement, hmm. that shows how humble it is. Hmm. This is what people need to know about DSA. Wow. You don't just, don't just be judging and saying all, of, all sort of things. Hmm. Until you are able to hear from him direct, then judge him then. 
<laughs> I, you know, people, you know, it's just interesting. It's, I mean, some of the things you're saying is just so quite interesting. And I, I'm sure we have some of our callers right now. So we're going to start, we're going to prepare our, our, our line right now to start receiving our callers. So people would like to just join to, to share their thoughts. So if, you, if you're that person who wants, to, who wants to call, like I announced before, the way to do it is very easy. Just go to uh, Facebook Messenger, search for uh, Olena S. So that's O-L-E-N-A-S dot. So just search for Olena S and then you can uh, write to us and then when it's time for us to make the calls, we'll be willing to call and to hear your thoughts, to hear you contribute to the discussion of today. Uh, you know, and I, well, I want to also announce this book that Mrs. Olajumoke spoke about. That is the Who Am I? Why Who am, am I? Here. You know, because to, oh. yeah, you want to say something, right? And it's another one, Why Am I Here? Or something like that. Yeah, it's actually one book. It's, it's, it's the title of the book. The, the full title of the book is Who Am I? Why Am I Here? Am I Here? Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's, well, he has read another one of his books. Okay. Mm. Maybe it would be good if you can tell us that. Yeah, I'll, if I can get all okay, of it. Okay, if you can yeah, get the whole of it. it. Okay, now. okay. I, okay, so. When I, yeah. Yeah, you can. I'll scroll on it. And when I get it during our conversation, you I'll can bring get it. it. Up. Okay, good. So let me just announce for this book right now. For people who don't know that there is. Uh, this book is actually titled Who Am I? Why Am I Here? by Dr. Sonia Adilaja. And um, the, almost everybody who has read this book always comes out with a testimony. And apart from yeah. this, Who Am I? I don't know if you know that there is actually a teaching. On who am I? Why am I here? There's a, a whole series on this where Dr. Sunday has uh, a whole list of videos where he was just teaching on how to uh, discover your calling, how to discover your purpose. But that is teaching that that is on the YouTube. But even apart from the YouTube, there is also another mentorship course. I think I just have to just say this so that people can know. There's a whole mentorship course that was Sunday built. It's a one month. It's a one month mentorship course, a holistic, comprehensive. People who went through that course, they said they've never, they've never had anything like that, ever. They've gone to conferences. We have people that said they've gone to conferences for years. They've paid thousands of dollars for these, but they, 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 did, they did not get in one day what they got in, what they've tried to get in all these years. And so this is a mentorship course that is for one month that Dr. Sunday actually offers. And it's, it is, you can get it at any time. So your month can start today. Your own month can start tomorrow. So anybody who is listening to us who is interested in this mentorship course, of course, it's, the, it's a paid course, right? It's just one month. The way to do it is just to write to our email. Our email is mentorship at godembassy.org. So just write to us. Tell us you're interested in this one month. Just one month mentorship course to discover your calling and purpose. So it is actually- The other book. Yeah, the other book that you want to talk about. Yes. It's How to Regain Your Lost Years. Okay. What's that you? Oh, mm. Wow. So how to regain- Your lost years. What's that you? My yes. son loved that one as well. Wow. How to regain your lost years. I hope, I hope it motivated you to read it, class. Pardon? I, I hope I hope you motivated you to read it. He did. He did. That's why I'm really. Look, I'm, I'm, that's why I said to you, I'm going to be the first person to download that hat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Awesome, awesome. Wow. How to regain your lost years? We're going to try to show. We're going to try to also show that uh, that book to our viewers. It's a fantastic book as well. Wow. How to regain your lost years? Well, I think. Many people are, many Christians who have, I mean, who have spent all their, their years, 10, 20, 30 years in all these Pentecostal, charismatic churches and in all of these things, I think that book should be a must read for a lot of people because mm. there are years, you know, there are years that have been lost that you praying that God should restore the years that the canker worm and the locust has eaten, that would not work. <laughs> You just praying that God restore all of these years that the locust and canker worm have eaten. You've been praying that prayer all these years. It hasn't worked. Mm. This book <laughs> is fantastic. It's another great book. This book would do it. How to get so mm -hmm. people might be asking how can they get this book? So let's let's start receiving our callers if we have them, please. 
They can get it on Amazon. On Amazon, beautiful. Yeah. yeah. You can get the book on Amazon. You could get the book also on Okada Book. You could get the book um, on. Uh, uh, this is, uh, there's a new platform, it's called BAM Books, that is B-A-M-B-O-O-K-S. So you can search for BAM Books on Google, and uh, Sunday has over a, hun a hundred books there, and it costs very, even l way cheaper than Amazon Kindle uh, Unlimited, actually. So anybody who's interested in reading, um, you know, ebooks, you want to check out bambooks.com. I, I learned that it is way cheaper than that. So, uh, Mrs. Mrs. Ojum, okay, I don't know, is there any uh, final word that you'd like to share with our viewers uh, before we call it a day? I, I, I am getting in, uh, an information that we don't have callers. So, please, I'd like to hear you. And is there any word of encouragement you'd like to give to our viewers or just any your, or your final remarks? I just want to thank God for DSS Live and he would live many, many, many more years Amen. and that he should continue believing in himself and believing in what he's doing. Um, I'm glad that nobody can easily influence him to change him. I thank God for his boldness and his hopefulness and his honesty. Beautiful. And um, I, one other thing that really surprised me is the amount of people that he has taken from gutter to grace. You oh. know, many people have become millionaires under him. Yes. Not that he contributed a penny or whatever, but wisdom that he has given to them and let them to become whom they are today should continue. Amen. I love him Amen. dearly. He's a dear brother to me. Nobody can change that. Awesome. And I love what he has done so far in my life personally. I really appreciate him and I wish him many more, you know, success in life. And um, he has introduced something new, to, very new to me now, which I know that he's not a selfish man. You know, this includes. Yeah, includes. As soon as he started, he called me and sent the stuff to me. I joined straight away. I don't just jump on things like that. Yeah. I joined straight away because I've had an experience, you know, in traveling on the ship and all that kind of thing. I know what it can cost. You see, some someone like him is not selfish. He's not thinking about himself. Yeah. If he sees anything good and he's enjoying that thing, he's ready to share it with True. others. True. Which is what he did with me. True. You know, so I appreciate meeting with him and I love him and um it's nice that Miss Hunchback, nobody can take that space now. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> Not even his wife. And my, my namesake, what's it? Yeah. She can't take that space. I'm, I'm glued to his back now. Awesome, awesome. So because of who he is and what I've learned from him, it'll be very, very difficult to detach me from him. I thank you as well as my brother. I thank everybody there today. Thank you. And I wish us all you know, the best. Yeah. And with what is going on in the world today, as we're praying to God, I pray that we'll see an end of it, Amen. that we'll be able to unite again together. Amen. Thank you very much for the interview and thank you for allowing me to speak my mind. Uh, you know, they, they may be after dropping, I would have, um, I might start thinking, oh, I should have said this, I should have said that. There's another year and um, another time to come. We and we have many, many more yes, things to say. Yes. But I love DSA so much. Awesome, he awesome. He's a wonderful man of God. I love what he's doing. He should continue. And I like the fact that he's not abusing anybody. He's not saying anything negative about anybody. He's just saying the, the truth. truth. And the truth is hard to take on board. Yeah. So let him keep with it and the Lord Almighty God will continue to bless him and uphold him and more wisdom to his, you know, his knowledge now because the more knowledgeable you are, the more your wisdom will That's get right. stronger. Right. So I just thank God for his life, his family and everything. Awesome. The Lord bless you too, my brother. Awesome. Wow, thank you so very much. You know, very few people don't know the background. And some things that happened yesterday with you, and even till today, uh, people uh, people don't know that it is a miracle. It is God's miracle that you're actually here today to have this discussion due to your health. I want to really thank you for taking that sacrifice. You know.
to even say, I mean, you said, no, we're going to have, it's going to happen. I'm not going to allow my <laughs> health condition or whatever to stop it. It's going to happen. And I must say that you've blessed us today with your testimonies. Thank you so much for being uh, with us this evening. Today is the second day of this um, marathon for the whole month. Tomorrow we're going to be having another guest. And um, we're hoping that this month is going to be uh, a month to encourage people is going to be a month to uplift uh, people's souls. And even despite the present challenge that we're having in the whole world, people will find a reason to smile, they will find a reason to rejoice, and they will find a reason to have hope for a better future. Thank you very much, Ma, for Thank being you, with you're us. Welcome. Thank you. And please do me a favor as you interview everyone from today, nobody's allowed to take the back. <laughs> because I'm glued there. <laughs> I'll, I'll keep that in mind. I'll, I'll definitely keep that in mind. Wow. Thank, thank you so you much. much. Thank you very much. To our viewers, bless you. amen, amen. Man. To our dear viewers, thank you for being with us today. We're going to be back. Let me add that. We're going to be back tomorrow by God's grace. Same time, 7 p.m. Keep time, 5 p.m. Uh, Nigerian time, 5 p.m. UK time. You have a wonderful evening and bye for now. Bye-bye. God bless. Thank you.